the majority of the fact about the idea is that the idea has to be clear, very crisp, and that we understand where we're going. Because out of that idea comes something that we all know about is the mission, right? Every has, every, everyone has a mission. Chambers have a mission. Cities have a mission, right? Every business has a mission and also a vision, right? But those don't exist unless we have a clear idea as to what it is that we want. And if we don't know what we want, it will be very difficult to move forward. So the first thing on the first step on getting our business going is to have a clear idea as to what it is that we want. Rule number one. The second part that we want about the business is the business name. You know, people need to understand who we are. Does anybody remember my name? Joe, thank you. <laughs> That's my name, you know. We all have a name that identifies us of who we are. And when we, when you see me tomorrow on the street and I say, oh, that's Joe, he was talking at the city hall. So, um, so it gives me an identity, right? So the first step of business identity is the name. Now some names don't mean much. And some names are very clear as to what it is that they do. But if I'm starting a business that nobody knows about, I want to make sure that the business name states what it is that I do. Because if I create a name that it has no idea and it tells the customer nothing about what I do, will they be able to find me? Can you find me without knowing what I do? The internet, sure. How will you look for me? If you don't know my name, how will you look for me? What's that? Fingerprints, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, so it's very, very critical that we have a business name that tells people what it is that we do. So first is the idea, second is the name, and then once we identify what name we want to have, then we want to make sure that the business name is not already taken, correct? So we do research. How do we research a business name? Someone said that. On internet. So we research, research the internet to find out if somebody else doesn't have our business name. Besides the internet, most likely we're going to be using Google, right? Um, we also have to research the USPTO, the US Patent and Trademark Office, to make sure that the business name is not someone's trademark. And then we kind of, you know, pretty soon find a letter from a nice attorney that says, please stop. <laughs> so we want to avoid that. So, the USPTO, the US Patent and Trademarks Office. So once we have those two, then we take one more and we go into the domain name uh, research. So we identify a domain name that is, see if it's that, uh, that domain name is also available. It's very important that the domain name be somewhat similar to the name of the business. Because when someone types, when we type online something, we don't really, who does www dot 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 dot? Nobody does, right? We just type, you know, Joe Molina and, and then LinkedIn, uh, Chamber of Commerce. Does anybody type dot dot www dot 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 HTTP, whatever that is, and then www, or is that Chamber of Commerce dot com? Does, is that CA or that GOV? Is that CA or, or GOV? Chamber of Commerce dot com? See, I didn't know that. But, but I, I don't need to know that because I just type, Chamber of Commerce, or just like Chamber of Commerce, and it comes up. So the way we search for things had to be very customers, customer friendly. And um, I, I use the term to, when we start a business, to, to Google proof our business. Because today, the way bi business are run by Google is awesome. How much, do you, how, much, how, much pays, uh, how much of you pay, or how many of you pay membership at Google? Raise your hand. Google has no membership, right? You just go on, uh, you know, open Google and there is no membership on Google. It's Google proof. We all use it. You know, unless, uh, you know, unlike the other ones that you have to pay the hour, but the hour, remember those? Got a lot of tons of CDs at home. <laughs> those don't, they're not applicable anymore. So Google proof the business is an excellent way to get a business started. So once we get our business name 
then we have to register that name. Uh, we use a, uh, if we are going to use a sole proprietor, we basically grow a DBA, doing business as. Who has a DBA here? Okay, so you know the process. You go to the county clerk's office, and then you fill out the form that says that you are a Jumolina Incorporated, and no, not Incorporated, but a Jumolina, and then the address and stuff, right? And then you publish your name for four weeks. You did that, right? On the newspaper, you know, those public notices, that means nothing, but they have to be there, right? So we do that for four weeks. And then uh, once we do that, then we go to the next step. What's the next step after we uh, do the DBA? Business license. Business license. We have someone here from the business license department that's going to be talking about later. There you go. So uh, she'll tell us all the steps about the city license and what's required, what's not required, and, you know, and to simplify, to Google proof the process for the city, right? She's going to Google proof the, profits, uh, the process for us. So once we have done the city license, we also have other things that we need to do. If we're selling a product, if we're selling a product, we need a number, correct? You know, we need, we need a number from the state for the sales tax. California Board of Equalization. So, you know, when we go to the store and says, I want a clicker, and the click, clicker costs me a dollar, and then it says plus tax, right? So California Board of Tax. So that money belongs to the state. So the state, you know, even though the, the, we pay the business the extra dollars for the tax, we really doesn't come to the to the to the business. It belongs to the state, and I'm going to show you how to stay, out, you know, to avoid problems with that in a minute. So we we do that. We got a business license, and then also the the federal government wants to know, hey, are you in business? So. To my identity, they all gave us a social security number, correct? We all have one. So the, this, the, the businesses also can have a, their own social security number, which is called the Federal Employer ID number. And those of you who have a DBA already have one of those. The Federal Employer ID number is free. It takes you 10 minutes to complete that online. And it allows the business to have a number so that I don't have to use my own social security number which is something that nowadays we don't want to be using all over the place. So we want to assign this, the business its own social security number, so the Federal Employee ID number. So when we get that through the IRS website, then the next step is a trip to the bank. Who doesn't want to go to the bank, right? That's where the money is. So we go to the bank. And uh, we, at the bank, we open two business accounts. One business account is for, you know, where all the money comes in and all the money goes out. And then there's a second account. Why two accounts? Why two accounts? One is operations. You got that right. What is the second account for? Not yet. We wish. <laughs> Taxes. Remember the sales tax? The sales tax is, is, is amount of dollars that go into the business but don't really belong to the business, belong to the state. So that money has to go somewhere else so we don't get confused. So at the end of the quarter or at the end of the month or at the end of the year, whatever they told us to do, that money is already there for them. We don't want to pretend that we have money that we don't really have. So we want to make sure that the money is separated. And that basically concludes the process of getting a, getting a business off the ground. Was that easy or what? How long does it take to get this process done? Any, shot, any, any ideas? How long does it take? Was it? Hmm. Well, it, it, if you, you follow the steps that I just processed, you can start the process at 9 o'clock in the morning, which is you know, now. You know, get your cup of coffee, hit the road, hit the net, and be done before lunch. And you'll be in business before lunch. Like that. Nope. Just a couple hours, and you'll be done. <laughs> All right. So let's continue. There are certain resources that you should be aware of. Of course, it's us. It's all about us, right? Us, the business. Uh, the Small Business Development Center, located right across the freeway, 1823 Mission Avenue, um, the, which is a program of the SBA. Uh, Miracosta College, which is also right across the, 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 the freeway, uh, with uh, training and classes that, that are offered for uh, new business owners and existing business owners. 
Uh, we, also, we also have the uh, adult education uh, program. That we offer classes, the Chamber of Commerce offers classes uh, with us and in partnership with, with us. So uh, there's a lot of resources available to you. We talk about what's in the name. Uh, again, uh, the, the name for those companies, you know, what the, the moment we get to that point where we don't have to say our name, that means we have accomplished something, right? But it takes a while. So the best way, the, but the best name to have when we start is a name that is descriptive, a name that tells people what it is that we do. And to help people, especially those of us who are very visual, we should have a logo or a symbol or a graph or a graphic that will tell people what it is that I do. If I'm a plumber, it will help to have a picture with some sort of plumbing stuff. It helps people to locate me, and that's my purpose, because we use the business name as the first tool for marketing. So I mentioned about what the business plan is. Um, we do have under the SPDC a, a class that we help you create a business plan, and now we are partnering with the library, which will be uh, talking to us today also to complete the research, the market research, which is one of the challenges for business owners, how to do the research, you know, is my, my business already overloaded in this particular area? So check, check it out. We have a calendar at the front that you can take. Uh, we talk about the domain registration. Any, any preferences on who, where you get your domain names? What's that? Go daddy and, uh, what's that? Blue house. Blue house. Pink house. Orange, no? Just Blue House. Hoover, and this, it doesn't matter where you go, uh, but this would be pretty cheap, you know, seven bucks. The legal structure, that's something that is a little more, more complicated than to explain in three minutes, but uh, decide how you're gonna start. Um, my suggestion is start the cheapest way possible with the least amount of liability possible. So if you're gonna be dealing with children and, and anything that is critical, incorporate or create a lim limited liability company right away. But if I'm only selling gadgets, I'm only selling clickers on, on online, well, my liability is pretty small, so I can start as a sole proprietor. But if it's gonna be anything in be beyond that, then I gotta think about that and, and set up a, a legal structure, corporation, limited liability company. I totally discour discourage inter uh, partnerships, um, not, and you, you, have, you know why, then we can talk offline. <laughs> Funding, again, is important. Um, don't ever use your own money. And um, I strongly suggest not to do the three Fs or whatever Fs that everybody talks about, friends, family, and the other ones. Uh, friends and family don't really count in business because they're not, you know, they just, you can only have so many friends and so many family members that come to the business. It has to be real business. So funding is a tricky part, but uh, we, what we do is 